The majority of Excel users update reports by inserting enough rows, copying and pasting the data, and then filling down the formulas. Well, that's the old way, filled with manual actions. We don't want that. Let's make this thing dynamic. So if you're ready, fire up Excel and let's go. Here's our data. It contains contract information from our contracts database. We have a start date, a contract name, a status, the number of months, the total value of that contract, and the end date. Now from this data, we create a report. This report has those same columns. So start date, name, status, months, total value, and end date. From that, we calculate the contract days, the days in the period, and the monthly cost. So if we're looking at September, we only want the number of days for September and for the contracts which are live. Now currently, this is a static report. Our goal here is to make this fully dynamic so that when we refresh our query, our formulas update and it includes all of those new contracts. In our report, we have data that is copied and pasted from a table. Now we know that if we reference a table column, that that cell reference expands or attracts depending on the amount of data. Therefore, rather than copying and pasting data, we can reference those table columns. So to do that, I'm going to select all of the pasted data, delete it. Then I'm going to reference my first column inside my table. I can then drag that across. That will then copy all of that down. We just need the formatting to be reapplied to that first row and we're done. We now have dynamic columns for our data. Now let's move on and look at our contract days. This formula calculates the number of days between the end date and the start date. To make this dynamic, we can simply add our hash, which is the spill reference operator on G7 and B7. And when we commit that, we'll get the spill error. But if we then delete those cells, that then spills down correctly. So from that one formula, we then spill down the calculation of contract days. Now let's move on and look at the days in period. So here you can see we have 22, and that's because our period is the month of September and our contract ends on the 22nd of September. Most of our other periods either finish before September or after September, so they have 30 or zero days. So for days in period, why don't we just add the same hash method as we used with our previous formula? Well, when we commit that, it doesn't work. And the reason is because the min and max that we've used inside this formula are aggregator functions. They only ever return a single result. So what we need to do is to use a helper function that will use min and max and spill it over each of those rows. To do that, we're going to use by row and lambda. So by row, that means it's going to work row by row over an array. Now, what array do we want? Well, we want to pass across the array that starts at B7 hash and the array that starts at G7 hash. But by row only lets us pass across one array. So we need to join these two columns together into a single array. For that, we're going to use HStack. So HStack, we want to use B7 hash, comma, G7 hash. That now creates a single array from those two columns. Next, we want to use the Lambda function. This is what causes the formula to calculate over each row. And we're going to use R as a variable to represent each row in that array. Now, rather than G7 hash, we want to reference R, but we can't just reference R because that is a two column array. We just want the first column. So we're going to use index, open bracket, R, and actually we want column two because we want G7, so we'll enter two, and then we'll close that bracket. We can use the same method for B7. We'll paste that in there and we want column one. Now we need to close our Lambda, close our by row. When we commit that, we get a spill error, but that's because we need to delete those values. It now calculates the correct values for days in period. So if we've got aggregators, we often need to use a Lambda function and also a helper function such as by row, by col, or map or similar functions. Now let's turn our attention to the monthly cost. This is a logic formula. It checks whether the days in period are greater than zero. It also checks whether the status is live and then it apportions the value of the contract into that period. Now what happens if we simply add the hash symbol after each of our cell references? Well, unfortunately, it still doesn't spill and this is because we've used 
and inside our logic. So and and or are formulas that do not spill. So if we reapproach this logic in a different way, what we can do instead of using and is that we can use array Boolean logic. So we're going to say that if i7 hash is bigger than zero, that will give us a true or false result. And if we multiply that by the second condition, whether d7 hash equals live, that will also give us a true or false result. So if we get two trues, that means that the result of that will be true, just like an AND function. If we want to use an OR function, we could use the plus symbol, and that would give us an OR function. But by using multiplication, we get AND. So when we commit that, you can see that our formula spills, and we can delete those other cells, and it spills correctly. Because we're rebuilding this formula, it's a good opportunity to revisit our logic. So we're checking whether the days in period are greater than naught, but then at the end of the formula, we're also multiplying by the days in period. So if they are naught, it already calculates that correctly, which means this first piece of logic, we could remove this from our formula entirely. Let me just remove those additional brackets as well. And when we commit that, we still get the correct values. So when we're going through this process of making our formulas dynamic, it's a good opportunity to revisit any logic that we have and see if there's things that we just no longer need. We now need to take a look at our total row, which is at the bottom of our report. Now the word total itself is just a hard coded value and the sum in cell J15 is based on a fixed cell reference. So if we end up with more or less rows in our report, we need the total row to move also. So I'm going to start by clearing out our existing total row. Let's add the word total below our name column. For this, we're going to use the vstack function. So vstack, we want the name column from our data, and we want to stack that with the word total underneath. We'll close that bracket, and now we get the word total underneath inside our array. We now want to calculate our monthly cost with the total at the bottom. So we've got our individual rows. We now want to sum those individual rows and return those rows and then the sum at the bottom. Let's expand our formula bar and we're going to use let and going to call this values. So our first calculation of those individual rows is called values. Now we want to return from our let function the vstack of values and then also the sum of values. So we'll close the sum, we'll close the vstack, we'll close the let, and when we commit that, we now get our value at the bottom. So we have our word total and also our total calculation. We now need to apply the formatting to our total row. Unfortunately, formatting is applied to a specific range, but if we're working with a spill range, it means that our total could be on almost any row. So what we need to do is to apply formatting in a range that is bigger than our spill range. So to start with, I'm going to look at the values here in our first row. I'm going to get that format painter and I'm going to apply that down to row 22. That means we've now got number formatting applied. We now need to apply the bold and underline for our total. So I'm going to select that same range. Then from the home ribbon, we want to go to conditional formatting we want to create a new rule. This will be based on a formula. We want to check where any value in column C in this range equals the word total. So we'll type equals. We want the column to be fixed, so $C. Now the row, we don't want that to be fixed because we want to test each individual row. So C7 equals total. We then want to format that row. We want to format that so it has a border at the top and we also want a font to be bold. We can then click OK, and then OK again. And now we get a total which is bold and underlined. Everything in our report is now dynamic. So let's test this and find out what happens if we add new data. Here in cell J15, we have the total of 23,240. Now let's go and simulate what might happen if we refresh our Power Query or add new data to our table. So I'll add some new data. I'll come back to our calculation sheet. You can see that the total is now 3398 and the total is now in cell J16. So our total has moved down. Our report is now 
completely dynamic and changes depending on the amount of data that we have inside our data tab. And that's it. That's how we can change a report that had manual processes into an automated report. It updates whenever our data changes. The only thing we need to be aware of is if our report might expand beyond the range that we have formatted. But apart from that, it is automatic. If you like this video, why not subscribe and sign up for notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos. Then after that, click there. That's another awesome Excel dynamic array formula video. You'll learn a lot from that as well. So go click there and I'll catch you next time.